Hello everybody, I'm back and we're going to another, do another video uh, featuring Essentials by Ellen. Um, this time I'm using the Voices in My Head, Volume 1 and 2. We're going to do some watercolor here. I have a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper, uh, 140 pound paper. And this is, I think this is a 4 by four and a half by six inch piece of cardstock. It was just one I pulled from my stash that had already been cut. And I am doing wet on wet first with some, Dan <clears throat> excuse me, Daniel Smith watercolors. So I used my mop brush to lay down a layer of water on there. And I, I don't know which yellow this is. It was whatever was in the palette. I just added some water to rehydrate what was already on the palette and threw that on the wet area that I'd already done. I also rehydrate the red that's laying on my palette. I'm hoping to do or get a blend of yellows to red, so yellow, orange, red, and just um, throwing it on there. There is nothing... Uh, detailed or planned other than the colors on this. So I dried that with my heat gun and you will see that watercolors as usual dry back much lighter than they appear when you first put them on. The secret is layering. Add more layers and you don't have to be careful. This is really just a very rough um, technique at, at this time anyway. And I'm um, going to add some more red. I got some from the palette right from the paint pot and laid that down quickly over the top of the second layer of yellow so I get more vibrant color. And I decided at the last second to add some spatters because who doesn't love spatters? I am doing this mainly because I don't have a word bubble dye. And I thought about hand cutting them and I thought about um, using something else and then I thought, you know, I haven't played with my watercolors in a while and I really enjoy watercolors. So we're going to create our own word bubble, thought bubble for our girl for this um, card. So I've dried it thoroughly because we're going to do some heat embossing here. Um, I am going to take one of the sentiments, uh, something about putting your hair up in a bun, drinking some coffee and, uh, getting on with it, um, you'll be able to see the exact sentiment when we're done here. I'm going to use my anti-static powder bag, which is just a sock that I put some cornstarch in and stitched shut. And um, I am using Versamark ink. I do stamp it twice. Again, this is watercolor paper. Co using some copper embossing powder on that. And that goes very well going to heat set that quick. We want it to look shiny and raised. There it is. Drink some coffee, put your hair in a bun and deal with it. <laughs> I am probably going to send this card to my daughter. She and her fella have just purchased a house. Well, when I say they just purchased the house, the seller agreed to their price and they're starting to sign the documents. They won't um, close on it for another month or so, but we're all so, so excited. Um, they have a 19 month old right now and they live in a large city in a walk up apartment and there's just not enough room. They've outgrown their apartment. So I'm super excited. Anyway, this, this card is full of snark. This is very sarcastic. Um, but I think it'll be a great, uh, congratulations card for her. I am using the night shift, um, embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and this one I believe is the gold which is per so what the night shift ones are it's a black embossing powder with like a mica powder of another color in it so that when you shift it in the light it changes colors it's it's beautiful so I'm going to make this a redhead no my daughter's not a redhead but it fits with the overall color scheme so I lay one layer down and while it's still wet, I'm adding a little more intense um, watercolor here. It's the same watercolor paint, 
but it is more concentrated. And we'll let that dry. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take a... Now, this one's not actually a Daniel Smith. This is a Magello uh, Mission Gold in... I, I don't know if it's... I don't know how to pronounce it. It's J... A U N E Juan, um, not brilliant number two, I think is what this one is. Um, it makes great flesh tones. You can mix it with a variety of other, like yellows and and browns, to create multiple skin tones. And um, I had put it on too heavily the first layer, so I put a little more water on it and dabbed back. And some watercolors. You can't lift, um, but this hair color that I used, you can. And I had gone outside the lines and I just put some water on it and lifted it up with my rag. Now I'm going to use some Hero Arts uh, Glimmer Ink, I believe this is called. And this is the white version. And I'm adding some sparkle because I have to have sparkle. Sorry, life must sparkle. Even when it doesn't in real life, we need sparkle. So I took a stitched rectangle die and cut that down. I'm going to use a coaster blank here to add some stability, A, because that is watercolor paper, and I did not tape it down, which you don't always have to do, especially when you know you're going to use a coaster blank for dimension. I'm going to put my Misty on top of that for a little weight on it while I am using the Misty at the same time to add the sentiment inside. We're going to use the Hero Arts Copper Embossing Powder again. And I'm trying to decide where I want that sentiment on the inside. I'm going to use my Anti-Static Powder Tool again, take out my Versamark ink, and we're going to stamp that. I think I stamped it twice, uh, but you didn't need to see both times, I'm sure. And we're going to sprinkle on the Copper Embossing Powder and heat set that quick. So the exciting thing about, one of the exciting things about the house my daughter and her fella just bought is that it has a completely fenced backyard. So, yes, um, I don't know about you, but my kids, when they were that age, were always running pell-mell towards everything, including the street. So she's super excited about that. And it's a quiet residential street that they're moving to another amazing thing. So I didn't use enough bling with all my spattering, so I had to add some sequins. These are from my stash. I don't know that I purchased these. I have a feeling they came as an extra from an order or something. A lot of companies give you little freebies when you order directly from them, and this is probably one of them. I don't know how I feel about the silver to blue ones. In the container I had them in, they looked uh, champagne colored. Oh well. Now I'm going to use, this is, we're moving on to card number two. And this one's going to have a more positive uh, front to it. So we're going to use a cloud stencil. There are gobs of them out there. I just found the first one in my stash. And I think this one's actually from a Kindred Stamps limited edition box um, called uh, part of a tri part of the tribe or something like that. Um, anyway, so I'm using Mermaid Lagoon, Salty Ocean, and Blueprint Sketch. Just getting darker as we get towards the top and I'm flipping that cloud stencil front and back and tilting it this way and the other trying to create some variety in the cloud shapes and I don't clean the brush between I just use the same brush and as you can tell it does not uh, affect the color you still get the color that you want I thought I had to wash the stencil between colors at first but um, clearly not I'm not getting any transfer on the parts that get flipped over now this one I could have planned a little better I'm going to end up stenciling it twice but there's a funny little overlap and I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist because I'm not going to redo it. Yes, I am doing a slimline card. Now, clouds must have some shimmer. So pearlized water comes to the rescue. That is perfect pearls in the perfect pearl color added to a spritzer bottle of water. 
and I'm going to thoroughly dry this with my heat tool also. The entire piece is a lovely shimmery, uh, has a lovely shimmery coat to it now. We're going to take Trinity Stamps Slimline Scalloped uh, Frame and we're going to cut that out and that was so I could get placement correctly. Um, I had started to do it before I die cut it but figured I better I better not get too footloose and fancy free here. So I'm going to take a couple of sentiments from the stamp set um, and we're going to line those up on the card and I plan to heat emboss those. So I'm going to pull out the Versamark again and we'll ink those up. I think I did ink those up twice. I just when I'm heat embossing, I just don't want there to be any uh, spottiness because it's too hard to redo. So now I'm using the night shift in blue. And did you notice I didn't use my uh, powder bag? Yeah, that created some issues, um, which made me change the card in the end. Um, however, I do use a dry brush to remove a lot of the flex because it was sticking to where the washi tape had been to hold the dye down and it was all over all over around the sentiments so now i'm taking a piece of white cardstock and i'm stamping the lady again and we're going to use the same embossing powder the night shift in blue and i had used the powder tool this time, anti-static powder tool, and it did not have a lot of extra. So I'm going to use the same die to cut that out, and we're also going to use these this Cloud Edge die from the Concord Ninth Unicorn die set. I'm going to spritz that with the pearlized water also so it matches the pearliness, and I did heat set that off, of, off camera. So this is my 3.5 by 8.5 inch card base from Nina Solar White 110 pound uh, cardstock. I'm using my coaster blanks to uh, add a little dimension and stability to this card or to this panel. Um, and the Barely Art Precision Glue will put that underneath my Misty while I work on the other pieces and I'm just going to trim this piece. I have cut that down to two and three quarter inch because I believe it's three inches um, from side to side on the stitching behind the scalloped panel. And I'm just, I had just taken three coasters and cut them down to two and three quarter inches for the full length and then trimmed them down as needed. So they really don't need much time to dry in between. So when I am gluing it together, I just glue one piece, put it under the misty, and it's under there as long as it takes me to glue the next piece and then move on. So I add the um, uh, the scalloped, the main scalloped panel, and then I add the last panel here. And we're not done. I I'm going to line that up very carefully along the bottom. And now we need to do the inside. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the cloud stencil that we were using earlier. Um, and I am going to, oh, there you get to see what they say. Hello, my name is Awesome. Some days, yeah, I it's, it's a super cute. Something about some days I am doing great and other days I'm pulling the push handle on the door something like that I know I'm so eloquent <laughs> so again just using the ink that's left on the brush to add clouds to the inside and I'm being really brave here I am inking up the stamp really good using my powder tool because I learned my lesson earlier and I'm going to stamp the uh, sentiment on the inside that says positive positive mental vibes or something like that. Um, yes, positive mental vibes. Going to heat set that. I also use the same, so this entire card for this card, I use the same embossing powder. Um, I have a lot of embossing powder. I love to emboss. 
I have no problems using as many different kinds of embossing powders as I'd, I would like. So because of the nature of that particular embossing powder, I did add spatters to that card at the end to hide some of the boo-boos. Here's some close-ups of these cards. I hope you enjoyed this. I love these stamp sets. They're adorable. Please check out my video, or excuse me, please um, check out my other social media links and make sure you subscribe. There are clickable links to each of the supplies that I used in this these projects in the description box. Um, be sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you to everyone who's used my affiliate links to make purchases. I greatly appreciate it. See you next time. Bye-bye.